Element 3D, the most powerful plugin for After Effects. But what is it that makes this plugin so powerful? What are the advantages of using it? And what are its limitations, if any? Ever since I made my top 10 After Effects plugins video claiming Element to be number one, I've had a few people asking me to do tutorials and give them a few tips on how to use Element in their personal projects. Instead, I'm gonna give you some very essential information that I wish I would have known when I started my journey through the world of 3D arts and using the plugin, and what I think are the pros and cons of using the plugin itself. So let's get started. you gotta ask yourself is what is that you want to do you want to create some very high detail models like some unique characters you've designed or maybe your favorite comic characters unfortunately you can't do that with element 3d you can do some basic hard surface models like a chair and a table I even saw someone building guns which I thought was really cool but it's more of an artistic side so with the modeling limits inside element 3d you're better off using a 3D software like Maya, 3ds Max, Cinema 4D, ZBrush, Moto, Blender, and a few others. But maybe you don't want to build your own models. Maybe you want to use some that you can purchase online or even get some for free online. Maybe you want to animate the models to create some awesome fight scenes. Or maybe you want to create some very complex rigs with muscle and skin simulations or even win an Oscar like the guys at Weta Digital with their amazing anatomy simulations. Unfortunately, Element 3D doesn't do that either. You will need a 3D software. But maybe you just want to incorporate some basic 3D models into your compositions. Unfortunately, a lot of times the models that you get for free online, they don't have the best textures or sometimes they don't even have textures. So what if you want to create unique textures for these models? Paint them as you wish. Unfortunately, Element can't do that either. You would need a 3D painting software like Mari, Substance Painter, or even Photoshop. So what is Element 3D and what can you do with it? Element is basically a render engine. It can read 3D files like OBJs, but you're also a bit limited there, as it doesn't read FBX or Alumbic Cache, which are very common in the 3D world. So I asked myself all these questions, and I decided that I wanted to move completely into a 3D package, which I did. So one question that I was asking myself after was, if I'm already working on a 3D package, why would I want to bring my work and render it in Element? Why not render it just in the 3D package? Well, there's a few reasons. One, not every render package is as friendly to use. In my opinion, Element is extremely, extremely easy to use. The biggest one for me, time. Element 3D renders extremely fast compared to some of the biggest names out there in the market for rendering packages. And you know what people say, time is money. Especially when you have to model, animate, texture, rig. You can't really afford to spend too much time rendering. But the biggest downside for me is that in order to get a good view of your model, you need to import a very high topology model like in the hundreds of thousands of vertices. And if you're working with very complex scenes like muscle or skin simulation, you need to work with less typology to speed up your workflow. Now there's a few ways around it, but again, time. So now that I've shared my point of view, I want to demonstrate a little bit of what I'm talking about. I have rendered the following two images, one using Element and one using one of the best render engines in the market, Arnold. Can you guess which one was rendered using Element? Here I want to point out a few different things. This is the exact same model on both images. The vertices on this model come down to a total of 175,566. However, I used a smooth mesh view on the 3D software, allowing me to work with less typology and speed up my workflow. Something that you can't really do in Element. Sure, you can subdivide it, but it would still look very blocky on the edges of the model, as you can see. Also, final outcome. In order to get a better view of my model, I had to smooth my mesh by increasing the actual count of vertices, taking it all the way up to 776,052 vertices. Then, I brought my model back into Element 
added a few more lights, added some ambient occlusion, and I got a much better result. But to me, it still looks plasticky, although they're both using the exact same textures. So in order to render a 10 second clip at this quality, it would take around 32.4 hours or so. Something that would take Element about 20 minutes. Okay, so I took all this information into consideration. And from my point of view, Element suits better for stuff like motion graphics, title intro, and some other basic stuff. But if you want a little bit more of realism and to work with more complex scenes, you might want to consider other options. But please, take all the information you can find and make your own conclusions. However, you can still pull off some very, very cool stuff with Element. Okay guys, that's it for today's video and I hope I was able to provide you with some useful information and maybe help you with some of your future projects. If you liked the video, make sure you hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Also, if you feel like I've missed something, make sure you post it in the comments below. I'm always open for new suggestions and to learn from others. As always, I want to thank you for stopping by in this, your house, dark house. I'm Sean Garris and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, <laughs>